Let's take a look at another example of simplifying expressions using uh, Pythagorean identities. Let's go ahead and read this one together. It says one minus sine squared of x all divided by cosecant squared of x minus one. Now I've gone ahead and labeled the top as one and the bottom as three because the top looks a whole lot like the first Pythagorean identity that we, looked, that we learned, namely sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. It doesn't have a cosine squared in it, but it does have a sine squared and a one in it. So when you're doing these, you have to kind of recognize which of the identities it looks like, and that's why you need to know those identities. So I just labeled that as one, since it has two of the three things in, in the first identity. The bottom is cosecant squared of x minus one. That looks a whole lot like the third identity, namely cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals one. The only thing it's missing is cotangent squared. Hopefully we can rearrange this so that we can replace it with something simpler. So again, just always be on the lookout for which identities they look like. So how do we simplify one minus sine squared divided by cosecant squared minus one? We will use both of those identities. However, let's go ahead and follow the steps we learned before and make sure we are proactive about that. So the first step says to simplify the, uh, simplify the factors using Pythagorean identities. Before we skip that step, but in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and use it. So, Again, we have one minus sine squared. What we're gonna do is rearrange that first identity. All we have to do basically is subtract sine squared from both sides. So basically what you're doing is you're just moving the sine squared over and subtracting it, and you end up with cosecant squared of x is equal to one minus sine squared. So once you've gotten to that point, guess what? If one minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared, then you can replace this one minus sine squared with cosine squared. So that's exactly what we're gonna do for the first step, as we're just replacing the one minus sine squared with the cosine squared. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom. Again, the bottom looks like the third uh, identity, so we're gonna rearrange that one. So the third identity says that cosecant squared minus cotangent squared equals one. For this particular rearrangement, we're gonna add cotangent squared to both sides. Now we have cosecant squared is equal to one plus cotangent squared of x. But in order to get cosecant squared minus one, we're now going to have to move the one over. So now we're going to subtract one from both sides and we get cosecant squared minus one is equal to cotangent squared of x. Does this cosecant squared minus one look familiar? If you said this and you, if you said yes, you were correct because that's what we were given. Cosecant squared of x minus one. So now that we've proven that cosecant squared of x minus one is equal to cotangent squared of x, we can replace the cosecant squared minus one with cotangent squared of x. So we've basically taken this expression which has four terms and we've boiled it down to two. Cosine squared on the top, cotangent squared on the bottom. We've all done that as part of step one of just using Pythagorean identities to simplify. So once you rearrange them, you've now just got one term on top and one term on bottom, which is technically one term because it's just one fraction. Step two, we do want to follow this algorithm just in case. It says to factor once, not completely, and that's if it's possible, but it's just one single fraction. So there's really nothing to factor, which means we're gonna go on and move on to step three. Step three says to repeat steps one and two, which we did end up doing that in example one. However, if we try to repeat Step one, there's really no Pythagorean identity we can use at this point. We've already narrowed it down to one on top and one on bottom. And again, we can't factor. So just always do step three just in case, but since it's not applicable, we're gonna check it off and move to step four. And that's how algor algorithms work. You don't always use them, but you always follow the procedure. Step four is to simplify using quotient identities. So now that it's a single term, we're gonna turn everything into sine and cosine. Now the top is already cosine squared, However, the bottom, and I'll, I'll write it on this page just so you can see, cotangent squared would be, um, so the, defini the definition of cotangent in terms of quotient identities is cosine over sine. So we can replace the bottom with cosine squared of x over sine squared of x, which is what we're gonna do in step four. I'm just showing you on, the, on this page so you don't get confused. So this is gonna be replaced with that. 
So for step four, it will be replaced with cosine squared over sine squared. We have cosine squared on top and this fraction on the bottom, so we're going to keep change flip. Keep the cosine squared on top, change the division and multiplication. Flip the bottom, I'll use uh, a color to show that. So when it gets flipped, it becomes sine squared on top and cosine squared on bottom. And now look, we have a cosine squared here and a cosine squared there. We can write the original cosine squared as over 1, and now you can clearly see that these are going to get crossed out, which we're going to do in this step. And if they get crossed out, then we just have a sine squared on top and a 1 on bottom. So the final step is sine squared of x. So we've actually just proven, now we get to step 5 in case we need to simplify something. I'll just use a different color there. Let's use, uh, we'll go back to, uh, we'll get brown. Um, we've just proven that, so can you simplify sine squared? No, that's as simple as it gets, right? There's nothing you can do. You don't want to break it apart as sine times sine. So the final answer for step five is sine squared of x. So we've just taken the Pythagorean identities. We've taken something one minus sine squared over cosecant squared minus one, which is very complicated. We've simplified it down to sine squared using these five simple steps. If you have any other questions about this example, let me know.